Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and isn't this a beauty? Wow, a psychedelic artwork at its best, huh? <laughs> Not. Oh boy, this is a flyer from the Matrix Club, of course, in San Francisco. I'll give you a quick top to bottom. It's, uh, I believe it's probably just a cheap mimeograph, right? Did they have Xerox machines back then? And, uh, blowing in the breeze a little bit. But a lot of information on there, but, uh, you know, just a weak black and white mimeographed sheet that undoubtedly sat on the counter of the Matrix and a few other places. But, boy, I love this thing because, um, you know, it's an example of something that's not visually compelling, but very rich in its history and genesis found therein, if you will. So, January 1966, Marty Ballin's Matrix Club. Don't forget he started that. The founder of the airplane also was the founder of the Matrix, although it didn't go on to great things on Fillmore Avenue. Um, so since Ballin founded the club, naturally, the Jefferson Airplane was the house band for the Matrix. That makes perfect sense. And this thing was small, held only 150 people, sort of like McCabe's Guitar Shop in Santa Monica, California, perhaps. Now, the Matrix had been open for about five months at this point, August of 1965, and that's about how long the Jefferson Airplane had their name. They had just been coalescing and not sure what to call themselves. I think it was Yorma who said, hey, Blind Lemon Jefferson Airplane was a satirical name he had dreamed up or his friend, and they shortened it until we could find something better. Um, and they obviously stuck with Jefferson Airplane. So, um, so the airplane being the house band here at the Matrix, they're playing this week. This is a week of shows starting January 9th of 1966, and I'm just not sure how well you can see it. But um, the, uh, the airplane are playing on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then on Thursday and Saturday, down toward the bottom there, are the newly named Grateful Dead. How cool is that? Let me change arms here. Um, how newly named are they? Well, let's put it this way. Between the Thursday and, um, let's see, between the Thursday and Saturday gigs with the Grateful Dead on this flyer, Friday night was Bill Graham's third Mime Troupe appeal at the Fillmore, and the poster for that show says the Grateful Dead, formerly the Warlocks, so on that Friday, Graham was having to sell this newly named Grateful Dead partially under their old name, so that's what I call definitely a new name. And boy, the dead were busy, I'll tell you. Thursday at the Matrix, Friday at the Fillmore for the Mime Troupe appeal, and then back here Saturday at the Matrix. Now, an interesting aspect of this for sure that I just love is how they handle Mondays. Mondays are covered twice on this, and so twice it says open auditions at the Matrix Club. And it's kind of funny, I don't know if you can read that stripe, but it says things like, no folk without rock. <laughs> they did not want just another singer-songwriter with an acoustic guitar, you know, doing his own songs. The folk era had peaked already, the Beatles pretty much had wiped it out the year before, and anybody can pick up an acoustic guitar. No, they wanted, they wanted folk rock, they wanted bands and lots of other clever things they say on here. And then if you go down below, to the Monday mention, what's really cool is that it says, with Big Brother and the Holding Company with an arrow. Oh man, that is so cool. Wow, because Big Brother, talk about being newly formed. They had just sort of coalesced and emerged um, in late December. Their first public appearances were like in December. Of course, this is without Janice. She would join in the summer of 66. But I mean, Big Brother was just under the um, stewardship, by the way, of Chet Helms, who would go on to steward the family dog later. But anyway, what you basically have here is San Francisco's three biggest bands ever. And in their nomenclature, if you will, they were weeks old, weeks old, and months old. So, you know, and it's at the Airplanes nightclub on Fillmore Avenue. I mean, what killer, killer, you know, providence and stuff, not, not providence, that's the wrong word, but history, I should say, and background to the performances on this. And then finally, the month it's in, January of 1966, oh my God, what a stellar, stellar month in the history of pop music in general, but certainly San Fran Bay Area psychedelic rock, my goodness. Um, this week, this flyer starts on Sunday, January 9th. The night before in San Francisco, Saturday, January 8th, the acid test arrived at the Fillmore Auditorium. Ken Kesey, the Merry Pranksters and everything. That's the night before. Then you've got during this week, Friday night, I already mentioned January 14th was Bill Graham's final Mime Troop Appeal concert at the Fillmore. And then two weeks after this, still in January, 21-2-3, you had the awesome, amazing Trips Festival, the landmark Trips Festival. So all this... How important and cool is January of 66 in Bay Area psychedelic music history? It's, it may be the most seminal, key, important month for a number of important events. So, 
I would say this piece, uh, I totally forgive it for not being pretty. <laughs> it's, got, it's got everything else. So, hope you enjoyed seeing it. I sure enjoy holding it. And um, ah, great stuff. Great history. So full. So, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.